Welcome to SharePoint Mastery Showcase, Episode 15, SharePoint 2007 Beginner Project 1, Part 9, with your host, Keith Hudson. At SharePoint Mastery, we help you master SharePoint one step at a time so you can control your own destiny. This is part 9 of SharePoint 2007 Beginner Project 1, how to design and build a simple help desk ticketing system in under 4 hours, even if you've never used SharePoint before. So far in this series, we've gone over a method for analyzing a business process, how to navigate in a SharePoint 2007 site and how to create a new site, how to edit the top line menu, how to create a custom list, single line of text, multiple line of text, date, choice, and calculated column, column types, and how to create and test a complex formula in a calculated column, and we've just shown you how to install SharePoint Designer 2007 and create a new workflow in SharePoint Designer. The next thing we need to do is to populate the desktop technician field in the problem ticket and send an email to alert the desktop technician to the new ticket. If you're still connected to the site in SharePoint Designer, great. If not, you can click File, Recent Sites, and select the site off your list of recent sites instead of having to copy and paste the URL in. Then we go to Workflows. My new ticket workflows are already showing there, but if I were coming in, I would have to first f open up that new ticket. Uh, group of files. The file I want is the XOML file. Double click on that and it will open up the SharePoint Workflow Designer. It takes a minute to open so don't panic. Even after it opens it might take a minute for your steps to show up. There are steps. Now first of all we need to build a couple of variables. We'll build a dynamic string and add a lookup to it, and this is to go grab the desktop technician's name. We call it technician name. There it is. And we'll know which desktop technician we need because desktop technician building will be the same as the building field in the current item. It'll give us a warning that we might have multi multiple entries. Dismiss the warning. We know we're OK. And then click OK. And now we need to name our variable. I'm going to call this tech name. And then I'm going to store also in a variable through a dynamic string the email address for the technician. Back to the desktop technician list find the email address this time. And again we have to tell it which technician to look for. It's the one whose building assignment is the same as the building for the user. Dismiss the warning. And then I will call this variable tech email. Now that I've got my variables built I can go ahead and populate using update list item the desktop technician field in the current problem ticket. There it is, the value I'll grab from workflow data, the tech name variable. Now I've updated my list. Now I need to send my email. Click on actions, send an email email this message, click on the address, book icon next to 2, click on workflow lookup. When the workflow define workflow lookup comes up, I'm looking for a workflow data, variable name, tech email. Now I know who that's going to, I can start filling in the email. My subject line will be, you have a new problem ticket and the body of my email will say 
you have a new problem ticket. The details are as follows. And then it will give the ticket number, the user, phone number, email, cube, building and problem description. So that the desktop technician doesn't have to go back into the list but can actually see all the information here and begin working the ticket. Now I'm going to pause the recording and fill these in using the add look up to body button as we did before. You should do the same in your practice site. Now that we've filled in all those field indicators, we'll go ahead and again check the workflow for syntactical errors. There are none. We'll click finish to save the workflow. This should be the final version of our workflow, but of course we need to test it. We'll go back into our problem ticket list. First we'll go to the desktop technicians. I'm going to choose John Adams and as you can see I've already put my email address in there so that when I create a new problem ticket you, you might have to edit it to put in your address. When I create a new problem ticket now and this will be I'll call this test desktop tech email. I, I'm not going to bother with an email address for me. All I'm worried about is the desktop technician. I have to make sure I choose building one here and I say OK. Now let's go over and see if the workflow is completed yet. Not yet. Refresh our list. It looks like it's completed. A ticket number has been added in. Let me go look at my email. Here's the email to the desktop technician. You have a new problem ticket. There's the ticket number and the building one. We didn't put anything else in except the test desktop tech email as the body of the email. Now that we've tested the workflow, let's go back into the settings for the problem tickets list and let's make those fields required that we need to be required. Problem description, name, I'll do the rest of these with the recording pause but the ones that we need to do are phone, email, cube, and building. There we go, you can see that they are all now required. Our solution is almost finished. In the next part of this series we will build some views of the data in the system for different users of the system. Thank you for joining us for this episode of SharePoint Mastery Showcase, presented by SharePoint Mastery, where we help you master SharePoint one step at a time so you can control your own destiny. Come visit us at www.spmastery.com. Thank you.